everyone and welcome to Tanime's Anime Review number 32. I've hit a brick wall. What I mean by this is that the next review that I meant to do, I haven't actually finished watching the series yet. So I'm going to be trying to have some late nights and some early morning and I'm going to try to get through it so I don't have to skip it. But if I'm unable to get through it in a reasonable amount of time, I will skip it and go on to the next one. But I will come back to it as soon as I finish it. Actually, looking at my list, the next couple I haven't actually seen yet. <laughs> Looks like I got some marathoning to do. Better get the popcorn ready. Today's anime review is dedicated to HTTM241. Ugh, I better pass on the popcorn. Winter is bad enough for the waistline without having to add to it. <laughs> Winter makes me so lazy. Maybe I was a bear in a past life. It's time to hibernate. And today's anime is... Blood Plus. This was first aired on October 8th of 2005 and finished on September 23rd of 2006 with 50 episodes. Blood Plus was inspired by the 2000 anime film called Blood the Last Vampire. However, there are only a few basic elements from the film. Junichi Fujisaku has been involved with both works being the director of Blood Plus and the writer of the novelization for Blood the Last Vampire. You will definitely get the vampire feel from Blood Plus, but it is not a vampire anime. Not once is any character ever referred to as a vampire. But when there's consumption of blood by a non-human person-ish thing, you assume vampire. Our story starts off with a girl with long black hair killing everything in sight, friend or foe, with a long katana during some sort of war. So right off the bat you're confused as heck as to what's going on, but at least you know it's going to be a violent one. This is a very in-depth series and there's a lot to cover to feel that you have a good grasp on the story. Corrupterins, military aspect, the shift, chevaliers. All of these terms you're just not going to get without seeing the series. So I am going to try to keep this as general as possible. One, so I don't give spoilers, and two, so we're not sitting here for hours with me trying to explain. <laughs> Saya is our main character. At first, she seems to be just a typical high school student. We of course know better, and she does turn out to be anything but typical. She has lost the memory of her past, but it turns out that she is a warrior and she has made a vow to kill all Corrupterans. Now a Corrupteran is the lowest form of the species and they're the beasts that survive off of eating human blood, which is where the vampire aspect comes into it. Saya has a special kind of blood. She has a certain kind of blood that when mixed with the blood of the Corrupterans will crystallize it and turn them to dust. So the sword that she carries has notches through it. And when she pulls out the sword, when she's about to attack, she'll slice her hand or her thumb or something along the blade and let her blood drip through the notches so that it runs throughout the sword. Then bing bang boom, stabity death. Saya is followed by her chevalier, Haji. He is endlessly loyal to her and will forever stay by her side. Plus, he's hot! So bonus for us! Chevaliers are created by mixing Saya's blood with that of a human. If they're mortally wounded, it can save them from dying, but they do at that point become frozen in time, never aging and never dying. They do become stronger and faster, like a vampire, but there's none of this garlic, gore, can't go out in the daylight type thing. They do heal ridiculously quick though. But the daylight aspect of it does come into the storyline. It falls upon the creatures known as the Shift. The Shift came to be when the government tried to manually manufacture Chevalier. So in other words, they're flawed products. And if they go into the sunlight, they will burst into flame. They also have a limited life. Their blood will eventually crystallize on its own and they will die. It's very sad. Oh man, I really just want to jump into detail on Haji though. I love him. 
He's such an awesome character. His past is so good, but so sad. He's by far my favorite character. But anyway, quick overview, so moving on. Saya is forced to leave her short-lived normal life in order to kill Coropterans, whether she wants to or not. She does slowly get her memory back throughout the series, which does explain a lot as they go. Saya's family is really her adopted family. Her adopted father also adopted two other kids, Kai and Riku. When Saya has to do all this corrupter and killing things, of course they don't really understand what's going on. But her being a part of their family, they do chase after her wherever she goes wanting to help and do whatever they can to help her again have a normal life. I think they were really creative with this series. I will even admit that the English version didn't even destroy this series. Which I find a dubbed anime is always done better when the anime they're dubbing is a darker series, rather than a comedy or a love story. It's not a real tear-jerking anime, but for those softies out there, there are a few scenes that will pull at your heartstrings, so have your tissues ready just in case. I was also very pleased with the ending to this series. Now, I can't really go into detail as to why without spoiling it, but it was just a really good ending. They so rarely end an anime well, but I was really impressed with this one. It left me satisfied and pleased that I watched the series to get to that point. I should also mention the animation in this one. It's a little different than what people are usually used to, but it's still beautifully done and it's put together very well. I find it to be a little bit more artsy, which they really show off during the ending credits. Overall, this is a great series, and if you want a little taste of the dark side, I would definitely recommend checking this one out. I'm going to give this anime a 4 out of 5. I'd watch it again just to see Haji all over again. I love that man! If you liked this anime, you might also like Claymore, Helsing, or Full Metal Alchemist. Thanks for watching! Jamatane! You know the drill! Here's your random stuff. First up is an epic music video. Now this is not an AMV, this is an actual music video. It's made with real people and the anime. Watch it to find out what I mean, but it is really epic. A friend showed it to me and I fell in love with it instantly. Thanks, Kaboo! Next is the official trailer to the movie Blood the Last Vampire. Trust me, if you liked the anime, you will love this movie. Watch the trailer and you'll want to watch it. And last is a cosplay skit. It has Haji in it, so me like. And with that, the show is over. No more. All done. Until next time. Enjoy. Bye-bye.